you know, as long as I've, <laughs> well, as long as I've been a deer hunter, and particularly as long as, it, as long as I've had to farm out here, I have never planted a food plot until this year. And with the help of my good buddy Jerry, I got a good looking plot going here. Now, good, I, this is new to me, so I don't know a heck of a lot about it, but this is uh, it's mostly oats and Austrian peas and turnips and clover and rye, whatever, but I come out here this morning and I don't know if this is it don't really look like anything well, it could be turkey, something's walked around in it, but something's got the all well, the oats just laying over. I don't know if that's their own weight. I don't know what that is. But anyway it looks like something is Really working on the Austrian peas, that's for sure. <laughs> They're going down quick, it would appear. And this over here, this area here, is just turnips. <laughs> I've learned a lot about planting turnips. In this area here, this whole area, I mean, I just, of course, I just broadcast my hand, but they get a precious few little seeds and I'd throw them as far as I could. <laughs> but <laughs> I thought, well, I ain't got enough seeds in there to mount the hill bean. Why don't you look at the turnips? <laughs> Goodness gracious. There's a pile of turnips. Now, up here on this end of the food plot, everything's still standing up good and straight. And there's lots of Austrian peas. Tons of Austrian peas up here. Something is hitting the food plot. Could have sure eat those peas down. Anyway, then right up here, <laughs> this is turnips. Uh, <laughs> I, cut, cut, uh, <laughs> I took a couple of hands full of those little bitty turnip seeds. And I flung them out across this little area here that I had just disked it up. I had not plowed it, just disked up. But, <laughs> goodness gracious, they're growing like a weed, I'll tell you that. They're thicker than fleas. <laughs> Probably there's turkey feathers amongst them. Yeah, something's walking through them. It's got to be turkeys. Anyhow, I'm going to. Set me up a target up here. That's uh, and, and take the rifles that I'm planning on deer hunting with, and I'm going to set me up a target and shoot from the Quigley down there, and see where my zero actually is. I don't want to guess that. I want to know where I'm hitting at around this food plot distance. So. I'll set me up a target here in a minute. Okay. 250 yards to right here. 
And so that'll be right here around the food plot. The shots will be anywhere from 2.30 on the lower end of the food plot down here to 2.60 right here. But it's going to be an average of somewhere around 250 yards. So I'll go down, get out a few rifles, and get this shooting started. Well, first rifle I'm going to shoot today is going to be my, what has become my, actually my favorite long range, pick them off at a distance rifle. That's uh, this Ruger number one medium sporter in 7mm mag. It is quite the rifle. It's, it's definitely taking some of my very best deer, without a doubt. This is it's set up here. <laughs> this morning started out cool, getting warm already. Uh, it's set up here. It's steady. I mean, it's pretty steady, but it's not near as steady as the bench rest over here. The concrete or, or the other bench rest. And this is on legs. It's portable. It's a little bit on the shaky order, but it works. It works really good. So I will try a couple of shots first with this and seven millimeter, seven millimeter Remington mag. And I take this off. See what we come up with here. Uh, 160 grain Nosler Acubon what would be shooting at it.
Well, those two felt pretty good. Let me get a spot and scope up here. Look if I can see what they did. You drifted a little bit right, that probably could be the wind, because there is a wind out there. They are, for all practical purposes, pretty much, I'm going to shoot one more. One more. That's good. That's good. That's real good. It's just a tiny bit right, but that there is a breeze out there. It could be drifting it that way. Well, so we'll just leave it. Leave it right there. Now, next up. We've got, it's another Ruger number no. one. It's my little Ruger number no. one international with the full length Manneker style stock. And it's a and seven, 57 millimeter Mauser. Uh, seven millimeter Mauser or seven fit seven. It is my hands down favorite deer rifle. And goodness gracious, it's my lucky rifle. If I take it, Generally, I get something. So, it's the next. Uh, see where it's hitting out there at 250 yards. It might be about right, and it might be a little low, but we'll never know. We don't try it, will we? <laughs> so we're going to give it a whirl here. It's not real easy to take the, the front swivel off this one, so, you know, after shooting off those really solid benches, <laughs> this thing is, uh, seems a little odd <laughs> shooting off this one that's not quite so steady. Matter of fact, it's a little wobbly over. <laughs> uh, Compare it anyway. There again, that's 160 grain Nosler Acubon in the little 7 fit 7 mouse. Same bullet shooting in the 7 millimeter mag. Okay. Let's see what we can do here.
now we come <laughs> come to the third Ruger number one that I'm going to shoot today and have me a target of record as to where each of these is printing at my food plot distance which is an average of 250 yards it could be as short as 230 and it could be as long as 260 to the food plot but this is the third number one that I'll be shooting today and it's a 30 on 6 light sporter 30 on 6 light sporter the first one was a, a medium sporter 7 millimeter mag and then I had the international 757 <laughs> and anytime I've got any one of these in my hand it's hard you're wrestling so what's my favorite because <laughs> they're all absolutely awesome rifle but I reckon that little 757 international would, would win the a close contest but my goodness all Ruger number ones the blue steel and walnut let me put that the blue steel and walnut versions as far as I'm concerned are some of the most awesome rifles that ever won and I'm fortunate enough to be shooting three of them here today so and in in the little 757 and uh, the 7 millimeter mag I'm shooting 160 grain bullet whereas most folks be shooting somewhere around 140 like I said I've become I'm somewhat of a fan of the heavy bullet per caliber I belong to that crowd pretty much uh, like I say I'm 80 years old and when I was a young man heavy bullets per caliber was was the norm because we had most of what we shot was quite considerably slower than what you're shooting today so it was a pretty much a slower moving uh, heavier bullet day then along come Roy Weatherby <laughs> and he sort of changed the shooting world up and put it sort of stood it on its head you know but he, he was a proponent of the high velocity smaller bullets per caliber crowd and when the uh, uh, spear invented the um, CCI spear, they, they invented the Magnum primer. Well, that really, that, that really opened the door for the the really heavy charges of powder to where you could get the the high velocity. And, and so, like a lot of people, I kind of went on the uh, small smaller bullet per caliber, high velocity crowd, and I did that for quite a while. And a, a, a smaller bullet traveling at a real good velocity can be absolutely devastating as far as performance goes. But it can also not give such spectacular performance. Now I've got a red green deficiency, which means I can't, I have a hard time following a blood trail. And if I shoot one of these high, high velocity, smaller bullet per caliber numbers, and that animal drops, that's fantastic. But what if he don't, if he runs off? Too many times, the bullet failed to exit. Now it's devastating what it did inside, but it failed to exit and the animal ran off. And so many times, that skin or fat has shifted a little bit and it's pretty much blocked that entrance hole and it left almost no blood trail, precious little blood trail, which is absolutely almost impossible for me to follow and but the heavier slower bullets generally speaking will pass through give me a pass through shot will give me an exit hole and that exit hole is a bigger hole gives me a better blood trail to follow so that that's what I go for and I've pretty much come full circle I've come back to the pretty much to my roots you might say I've come back to the heavy bullets per, per caliber type of a situation. And in the 7 millimeter, the 160 grains is a fairly heavy bullet. Now, yeah, you can go higher than that, but for, for normal normal hunting, something like a 160 grain acuball, that's a, that's a pretty heavy bullet. And the velocity, in, particularly in the smaller ones, like the 757 and 708, they're not all that fast, and so you lose a little bit of point-blank range 
as far as that goes. And I, I, I hold myself to practical shooting range. And I'm not a fan of this long range stuff at all because there's too much could go wrong. I mean, if nothing else, the time of flight of that bullet, the time of flight, that animal can move and cause you to totally miss or in worst case, Meant a wound them, and I, I'm just I'm just not in favor of that at all. Even if you could make that shot, to me it's not ethical to even try. Too much can go wrong. A lot can go wrong at 200 yards for heaven's sake. An animal can move before that bullet at 200 yards gets there. And then out there at these long ranges, man, he's got all day to, to move. I mean, it takes a, a noticeable time. Shooting right here, if you never noticed some of the videos when I'm shooting at rock up here, somewhere around 280, 300 yards, there is a definite time lapse from the time this gun goes off to the time bullet hits that rock. Animal can move, so I hold myself to practical range, hopefully 300 yards, at the absolute outside most. And that's only with a very flat shooting gun, something like the 7mm mag, that Ruger number one 7mm mag, I will do that. At 400 yards, I'll hold on top of the animal and drop the bullet into the middle of it. Or one of my 300 mags will do the same thing. But, generally speaking, I like to hold it to less than 300, 300 yards or less. And like I said, the food plot on average is right at anywhere from 230 to 260 and average around 250. So I'm shooting at 250 with heavy bullet per caliber in those two, except in the 30 on 6. Now, in the 30 on 6, I elected to kind of split the difference. Rather than shooting a 150 grain bullet that I shot for many, many years, or shooting 180 grains or 200 grains that, that I often shoot in the 30 caliber, I got 30 on 6 loads over here that I shoot 200 grain bullets in. And they're awesome. They're, they're, they're great. But they're medium range. They're medium range. I mean, it's, it's uh, for my way of shooting it. To me, medium range 200 yards. So I, I, on this, and, and 30 out sixes in, in, in general, for some reason I like shooting 165 grain bullets. It, they're not quite the, the, what 180 grain is, but they're, they're a little bit more than 150. So generally speaking, they give me very, they've given me very good performance in any 30 caliber, whether it be the 30 out six, the 300 Savage, 308, whatever it is. But right now, what I'm going to be shooting now, this one, it will be a 165 grain uh, uh, Spitzer uh, uh, bullet. So, it, it actually, it's a 165 grain Sierra Spitzer boat tail. So, it's a it's a very aerodynamic bullet for the 30 out 6. And let's just see where it actually prints out there at that 250 yard food plot. Let's see what we can do here in that patent step, everybody. Now this, this wrist, like I said, it's more of a field wrist. It, it's not a, it's not a bench wrist, you know, steady bench wrist like my concrete benches or the one we'll bear in the barn, which are, which are super steady. These are It's steady enough, but it's not super good. It's it's more of a field type wrist. I mean, you got a little bit of wobble here, like you under any field condition. So accuracy is not what it would be off a super steady wrist, but it's adequate, and it shows me what I mean. It's it's, it's realistic.
Now ask me if my shoulder knows I've been shooting today. <laughs> it sure does. It surely does. Let's get the spot scope. Get the spot scope out. Let's see what that tells. I am not a fan of cleaning the rifles until they need it. These might need it. Hmm. Need to clean them all of them and put them back on the bench again. I mean, all these would, yeah, I dropped the deer out there at, at the food plot ranges, that's for sure, but. I've got a lot of wind today, so I need to reshoot again when I don't have all this wind. There's a lot of wind up. So the others have been off to the right a little bit. Wind may have changed, these have drifted off to the left a little. And it's strung a little bit of accuracy, I mean, up and down wise, but I'm only shooting a five power scope and from a rather wobbly little bench here. So, I can't complain about what's going on out there right now, and I will have my target of record. Right here, so with whatever gun I'm using, when the deer comes up out here, I can look at that target and I'll know where I need to hold, or where I'm going to be hitting at that distance. So. But, <laughs> after shooting off of Concrete and the real steady bench over here in the over here in the barn. Shooting, shooting off this one's a little bit <laughs> a little bit shaky, and naturally I just you just don't get quite the accuracy that you're going to get off of those uh, more solid rests. But this is field shooting. This ain't this ain't target uh, uh, bench rest shooting. This this is under field conditions. This is shooting from a blind with a pretty good rest, but not an absolute super solid rest. Let's put it that way. So, so far so good, and let's go get another. And now, now we come to the fourth and final rifle that I'm going to shoot today up here at, uh, uh, at the target up here at the food plot, so I can have a target of reference. That meaning, when, uh, when I'm out here hunting, regardless of, I'll, I'll have one of these four rifles this year. I mean, I, I've already settled on that. It'll be one of these four. It'll be out here virtually all the time, quickly. The 7mm mag, Ruger number one, the 757 Ruger number one, and the 30 alt 6 Ruger number one. So three of them will be Ruger number ones. And the, the other possibility will be the BLR, Browning BLR, in 7mm 08. And there again, in the little 7mm uh, 7 08, I'm shooting 160 grain bullet, which is a big bullet for a 7mm 08. Velocity is, is moderate, as, as you'd expect. But like I said, I'm a heavy bullet per caliber man. I like it that way. But you don't get... You lose about 50 yards of point blank range in uh, up to the, it, we're speaking of the 300 to 400 yard uh, range. If you've got uh, uh, a high stepping, uh, say in the seven millimeter, 140 grain as opposed to 160 grain, you get about 50 more yards of point blank range. But you lose penetration and a little bit of wind bucking abilities and, and things of, like that, but primarily penetration. That's the main thing that I'm after. So I can get a good, if it deer, if the animal happens to run off, I got a good exit wound. It gives me a bigger hole, a much better blood trail because of the fact that I can't, I have a difficult time seeing red, seeing uh, blood. So, but anyway, I'm gonna shoot this little BLR 7mm 08 that 
like most any other gun I get, I'd, if it if it don't go through some modifications, it's rare. Virtually every gun I get, I see something that I'd like to change, that I'd like to change about it to make it better to suit me. Okay, so in this one, uh, I, I, I kind of like a pretty finish, you know, nice nice finish, but I don't like the browning finishes. They've got just a, a gloss that I don't like at all. And when you scratch them, that scratch is white. It, a white scratch just don't cut it. It just don't look right. So I take it off. And on this, 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 this gun here, I totally refinished the wood on it. And I've got probably 90 coats of hand-rubbed oil on it. I recut the checker and sharpened it up. And I free-floated the barrel. Now, you free float this barrel by bedding the barrel to the strut that comes at the, the strut that, that that this is a, a takedown nut is attached to. That's attached to a strut that, which pushes the forearm back against the receiver. So I bedded that where there's no movement in that forearm at all. And I cut this barrel band. That barrel band locks that stock to your barrel and any movement in this stock moves this little barrel and that affects your accuracy. So I cut, I cut that barrel band and tapered it off. I don't know if you can tell in here or not what I've, what I've done. But I, I cut that where that barrel is free floated. That barrel band does not interfere with my accuracy and it looks perfectly fine. To me, anyway, I don't care what anybody else likes or not. I like, uh, it would suit me if it didn't even have the barrel band, but it does, so you gotta live with it. Uh, so I made it serviceable, more accurate, more consistently accurate. I chose that over leaving that. So when we're, I cut it off and tapered it and all that and blued it back and blackened it back, rather, and it, it, it's, the barrel band serves no purpose. It's just hanging there now. It don't, it's not doing anything. But also, it's not messing up my accuracy. <laughs> so, let's get this swivels off this thing. Put it on the bench and see where that somewhat slow moving 7 millimeter weight bullet is hitting out there at that 200 yard uh, or 250 yard uh, food plot. It might be interesting to find out. We're going to see what it does. Okay. Last three rounds for today, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> well, I got a heck of a stiff wind out there that's probably playing havoc with those boats. Spot scope, see what it did.
<laughs> yeah. It's awesome. That is awesome. Where the two bullets are. <laughs> I gotta find out where that third, but I think I see it. I think I see it. The two or three are within, within an inch or so of each other. And a little left and only about an inch left. So 708. It's gonna be good at that distance too. It'd be a deer taker at those distances, so. <laughs> it really will be. So I gotta go up there and go up there and get the targets. Bring them back here and take a look at them. So pretty much the result of today's little shooting session from here in the Quigley, uh, the results here in the Quigley are that basically the 7mm mag with 160 grain bullet and the 30 ounce 6 with 165 grain are pretty much dead on at that food plot distance somewhere 250 yards they're, they're pretty much dead on the 708 and the 757 are a little bit low probably about two inches low <coughs> so with with either the two smaller seven millimeters with the heavy bullet I need to hold up just a tiny little bit such a little bit that I mean <laughs> when you're aiming a deer with a low power scope at that distance buddy all you got to do is compensate just a tiny little bit so they're well within the point blank range well within point blank range. Goodness gracious. You know, I can just hold right where I want and bullet will never be more than four inches low. It won't be near that. But to, to be precise, to try to hit exactly where you want, I would have to hold up just a tiny little bit. But for all practical purposes, the, the 7 millimeter Magnum and the 30 on 6 are dead on. And the 7 by, fit, or 7 by 57 and the 7 millimeter 8, both with the same 160 grain bullet that the 7 millimeter mag shooting are within the point blank range. They're just a little bit low, but they're not four inches low, so they're well within the point blank range. So at this distance, I'm ready to go. Now, what a, like I said, from shooting out here, this rest situation that I've got out here in the Quigley, it's not as steady as, as shooting off either the concrete bench or the real solid bench that I've got built up in a barn down here. The most solid is concrete, but you can't really tell much difference between it and the barn. 
if you're in the barn, somebody's walking around, you get a little bit of quivers, but nobody's walking around on that plenty of stick. But out here in the Quigley, Quigley's elevated. It's uh, it's up in the air. <laughs> now, the bottom of it's only about seven or eight foot off the ground, but it's on poles, on four poles. So it's a little bit of movement in the Quigley itself, Pre very little bit. But in the uh, the the portable rest that move that I can move around in here, it <laughs> compared to those others out there, <laughs> it's shaky. It's 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 pretty steady for to what you'd say under field conditions. It's 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 plenty steady enough for shooting a game around here. Yeah, it, it it it's steady for that, but it is not as steady as one of those more solid rests. So there again, if you watched any of the uh, any some of the other videos I'm shooting, you know, I'm uh, I'm kind of in the category. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, as long as the gun is shooting right, my advice is leave it alone. Don't clean it. As long as it's shooting good. But if the accuracy starts to fall off a little bit, then clean it. But clean it as mild with as mild a cleaner, something like. Uh, mineral spirits or hoppies, hoppies or something like that and stay away from the really harsh cleaners unless you've got nothing to lose if your accuracy is off and these mild cleaners don't, don't do any good you've got nothing to lose but I reckon by trying one of these harsh cleaners but I certainly would not go with them to begin with so my brother and I we've done quite a bit of ex well I think quite a bit we've tested about a dozen guns actually a little more than that maybe even close to two dozen but with these harsh cleaners you know but whatever the number actual number is i'll have to go figure it out but whatever it is every one of them everyone without exception the accuracy went to pot now i'm talking about gun, not just run the bill guns these are guns that we've worked on good accurate guns they're accurate guns and the accuracy on every one of them went to pop. Some of them terrible, some of them so-so, but all of them lost accuracy. And every last one of them required a significant number of rounds to be fired through. And then they came back. We got the accuracy back, but only by doing a lot of shooting. A ridiculous amount of shooting. But quite a bit of shooting has been done through all these of mine and I will go on a day when the wind is really calm when it's got a nice calm wind and shoot it up shoot them all off the solid bench down there and check that zero one more time and the accuracy one more time but what I shot today if I'd been shooting that off of a solid rest I'd say my accuracy is suffering and I need to clean them but with a windy condition and a shaky, somewhat of a shaky rest, I'm not going to put a lot of stock in that. So before I go doing a whole lot with them, I'm going to test them one more time. But I might just run a little bit of mineral spirits and a brush so I'm just to clean them out a little bit because particularly my 7mm mag, it has always shown a, a preference for clean barrels. It really likes a pretty clean barrel, isn't it? It is, it, it's, it's never really shot its best with a really real dirty barrel. So it probably needs a white cleaning. So, and the little uh, seven millimeter, seven fit seven international, uh, it generally prefers some more of a clean barrel. So I may go back to the house and give them a light cleaning, but I'll just be clean with mineral spirits and at the absolute most run the uh, bronze uh, brush through. But anyway, I'm pleased with the results I've got today, and I've got, I'll have my target of record, I call it, out here. And so whatever gun that I'm going to shoot, got out here to shoot, when that deer comes up anywhere near out there at the, a distance like at the, the food plot, which is average 250 yards, I can look at the target right here, and I know where that gun's hitting at that distance. So all of these. I've got a, a, a target for every one of them, and I'll, I'll, leave, I'll number them or identify them out here, put on what they are, which gun it is, 
the deer comes up or whatever, I come out here to hunt whatever gun I've got. I can just look at the target and I'll know where I need to hold for that gun on that day. I, I've got a record of it right here exactly where those things are printing. But like I said, I will do it one more time from a more solid rest and with no wind. Because uh, you want to eliminate all the variables you can when you're testing for accuracy. And one of the variables you want to eliminate is a little bit of a shaky rest and a, the quickly that's not as solid as being out there on firm ground off of a concrete bench. So <laughs> anyway, I will shoot one more target of record through each one of these. And those will during the season, I'll keep them out here so I'll know exactly how each one of these guns shoot. We'll talk soon.